Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. So today we are continuing with our BMW M3 Laguna Seca Blue Interior Detail Restore. I don't know why I just did the old shaky hands. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Got there all too fast All you could hope for Turned right on into dust My sweet Lord Where am I bound? Help me get my feet Back on the ground My sweet Lord Back on the ground My sweet Lord Where am I bound? Help me get my feet Back on the ground Okay guys, just an update on where we are with the M3. So we finished <coughs> stripping out the inside, we took these plastic pieces out and looked at the ones that could be saved and looked at the ones that couldn't. So this was one that could be saved. So all that black kind of plastic was failing, you know, that black coating, just like the heat over the years, it just softened it and rubberized it and it just gouged and all that. So it was a bit of a job to scrape it all off, literally scraping it all off and then using high grit sandpaper. Um, I think P80 or P150 I was using, then moving on to a higher grip and then finishing down with a P600 and then primering it and then spraying it with that ch stone chip paint. It's actually finished down quite nice, okay? You know, not perfect, not perfect, but good enough, literally good enough when, when, it, when it's all back in the car compared to how it looked before. You know, this piece is probably the one that came out the nicest. It was easier to spray, it was just a nightmare to get this black stuff off the car. In fact, I don't know, it saved me a fair old amount of money because replacing all these bits is expensive, but I'm not sure if I'd do that again. Um, so that one was sprayed, this one was sprayed, this one came out quite nice as well. Um, so I just sprayed around the edges of this one, all down these lines here. Hopefully you can see that. It came out pretty decent. Bit of texture in there. I'm not a professional sprayer. I tried to, the way I did it is again, scraped it all off, sanded it off. Um, used a tack cloth to get all the bits off of it. You know, and the dust and the bits. Um, obviously degreased it, primed it wet sanded the primer with p800 i think or p600 put another layer of primer on that wet sanded that primer again trying to get trying to get a really smooth primed surface to put the stone chip on but um like i say is, is there's some texture in there i'm not a professional painter i did the best as i could but quite pleased with the results and like i say it's good enough of a refurb you know, um, it's good enough compared to how it looked before. It now looks reasonably tidy and fresh, you know. Um, and then the main piece was this centre console. This was the bit that was really letting the car down. So you can see there's still some texture. There was a, this was a nightmare. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of texture in this, but it looks, I mean, you can see it. If if I took if I slowed it all down and really showed you it closely, I'm not even sure if the camera would pick up. But there's texture in here. Um, but like I say, pretty good, pretty good, pretty pleased. So that's most of the interior bits refinished. This piece here, it's too much in view in my opinion, and you're using it too much 
to refinish this piece. Plus some of these drawers had some, had some like issues with not closing properly. So I'm gonna bite the bullet and just replace the, this, take this electronic control panel out around the back, which unscrews and then get, and it's two parts after that. It's this part, I believe, and then this plastic part here with the drawer in it. So I'm gonna replace that. Um, everything else has kind of been cleaned. Got the leather guy coming round tomorrow. I've got the seats out of the car, so he's going to be painting the leather. He's going to have a look at these and advise. He might just mix me up some paint and then I'll sand them down, paint them and possibly lacquer them. Or he might just advise me. Depends on how much it costs, but I might get him to do these. We'll see. Um, Again, the problem is going to be getting them flat. It's going to be a lot of work. Getting this sticky paint, which has gone into a sort of sticky rubberized thing. So there we go. So yeah, leather refinished, interior rolled back in, arms refinished, full machine polish on the outside, refit the M Sport badge, uh, and then we've got couple of very quick jobs exhaust the exhaust tips are quite dirty like a lot of built up soot so we need to clean those deep clean those get those right back to looking fresh and new and the front scuttle and this is some sort of vent this vent hatch on the m3 bonnet just graying a little bit so we need to put um we need to use a, some sort of trim color restorer um, and most of those don't last more than the week, you know. Um, so we're probably going to be going for either Solution Finish or C -Te uh, G Technic C4. So um, we'll have a think about that later on. And that's it, the car's finished after that. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Forensic Detailing Channel. Um, where are we with the M3 kind of? detail or restoration so I did a video the other day of the exhaust tips I filmed a video a while back going through the car with all the things that we were going to be sorting out on so I finished refurbing the interior components or most of them in fact um, so these door rests these these door arm rests I suppose whatever you call them that were painted in titanium silver this one I managed to strip right down and I've just rough sanded back so I don't know if you can see that it's always difficult in, with the light and stuff but this is all roughly sanded I've got most of that rubbery paint off and now I need to go over this with a higher grit so somewhere between somewhere above P200 really now and then finish it with P600 etc and then primer it and then get get it sprayed I'm gonna do that myself because because I think I can I think if I take my time with that I think I can do that and here's this one in the original Titan silver that I need to you know you can see where it's failed there it's not actually too bad but it's all starting to fail and crack there so it needs to be done you know it's no point doing one and not the other so um, I'm gonna take this tomorrow to a paint shop near me and get them to map, mix me a paint. I think they'll be able to do it that will match this. And I'll probably put clear coat on top to protect it this time. Because I think no matter how strong that paint is, if you catch it with something like a key or something hard, it's gonna scratch. So let's put clear coat over the top of it and get it nice and flatten it all down. So that's the armrest. You can't see my head there. Crap filming, sorry. Uh, the next thing, the leather seats. So the leather guy has been. And this guy, I'm just going to take you off the camera. This guy was very good, impressive actually. So he's a kind of leather restorer, leather painter. Um, and here, here you can see the seat. I don't think he's painted the whole seat. But so what he's done is just. There it was all scuffed up there. So he's tried to 
He said he could make it look like new if he spent ages, but what he's got he's done is try and just to blend it in so that this seat that's been repaired doesn't look any different to the other seats which are inside the car, you know what I mean? So, um, and we've checked the colour match and the colour match is fantastic. So he knows, you know, he's done a great job at restoring this. Still a bit of sagging there. He's taken some of the sagging out of the middle. Still a bit of wear there, but the aim was to, to not try and make it look like a brand new seat, but just try and restore it and make it look like a very good condition seat. So I'm really happy with what he's done there. Um, then we also had the steering wheel. If you remember the steering wheel on the top of this car, I just focus in there. So the paint is still a little bit wet, so I've got to just no, it'll be dry to the touch, but it won't be strong. So he's he's uh, kind of repaired, just reconditioned. Just he put some spray kind of resin thing down with the texture, a little spray thing, and then then painted it up build, sort of build up the layers um because this had all been worn out flat so he knew what he was doing and um that's a little patch up and there you have the gear stick as well that gear stick was gone and really bad so he he's just done as good as he can and kind of built that back up with a bit of texture that still needs to dry off and um yeah so now we have our inside two bits of leather refinished let's go back to autofocus i already mentioned that i finished refurbing these interior parts for the color okay um stand back a bit so yeah finish refurbing the center console and some of the other bits and i need and i need to go to bmw and get another one of these because i'm not going to attempt to refurb something that's in plain sight that you're touching all the time even the feel the texture of the paint won't be right so this needs to be replaced with a part that's brand new and it's worth doing um, so really the order of play for me is get those door handles sorted out sprayed and get them back on the door cards as quickly as possible get the, what I can of the center console refitted back in the car um and then um then get myself down to bmw and get that last piece of the center console get the interior of the car completely finished so i can move on to actually detailing the exterior of the car which is what i want to which is really going to be important so yeah we're making some progress now with the um the interior detail i'm really keen really want to get the inside done now so this car can be driven and enjoyed a little bit and then once the inside's all done we get the outside done and then we're pretty much finished just debating whether or not to put a new set of tires on it tires on there they they are they're still road legal but they're low and they're scrubbed around the edges a little bit a little bit and they're just showing slight signs of perishing it's so one thing you can always do and if you look hard enough on your tires you'll find the date when the tire was made um, so really any tire that's older than four or five years um, if it's showing little signs of cracking or starting to perish around the edges even if there's plenty of tread on there on a high performance car you do not want to be tearing it around with perished tires that are that are old it's just not worth it you want fresh fresh rubber on there so I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to end up um, putting new tyres on there as well unfortunately it's cool if you're going to spend your money on one thing in life we're all going to go to the grave with money I'd rather go to the grave knowing I'd have a good set of tyres on this car so uh, that's the way I'm seeing it <laughs> so um, we're at the stage where the specific task I've got to do now is refinish these plastic door um, plastic door trim so you can see one there that i've flattened down with sandpaper that one needs to be flattened down so i've probably been mentioning this in other videos as well guys but if you haven't already seen pvd issue 3 has now been published 
and the forensics detailing channel has a vested interest in this because we were involved in the detailing spray mega test where we tested over 70 products and the results of all those tests are in the back um, I won't, won't do a spoiler but it's a really good read if you're interested in, in a product side where we take so many products and put them up against each other in a positive way you know um, so yeah that's available and that's important to the channel so see the description if you want to get a copy of that we have been to our paint shop to get some paint mixed up for this and they've put it in an aerosol for me as well so I have this kind of metallic what is this it's not really a metallic it's got a bit of kind of fleck to it a real fine fleck um, I've got that paint mixed up and I from the sample they've provided their, their color matching is pretty good it's a mm, oh, it's pretty bloody good you know that that's gonna be absolutely spot on really um, so well I hope it will be we'll see when we get it on but it it looks like they've done a good job there so we have our paint what we also have is plastic primer in a rattle can so we're gonna use a plastic primer we're gonna we're gonna use we're going to use some cellulose thinner to put on this existing paint that's failing to help weaken that and then we're going to flatten that off and then flatten it down to P600 and then maybe key it with P800 and then put the primer straight onto this and the bloke said don't flatten the plastic primer so good job he told me that because I wouldn't have known that I'd have probably tried to flatten it so key that in at P800 put the plastic primer straight on the paint straight on don't know how many coats probably do maybe one coat of primer um, two coats of paint maybe and then let that dry there should be a tiny little bit of texture in there which is what you kind of want you don't want it completely flat but thin thin you know and then once we've got it nice and smooth well you know we've got a good good coating of paint there we lacquer it and um, probably put two coats of at least two coats of lacquer on and then let that lacquer cure for a, for a fair old while and then flatten it down you know with using you know using polishes probably one of the machines just to get it all nice and shiny and then fit that back in the car So this cellulose thinner is just making easy work of this failing paint on here just taking it straight off so we with the microfiber and the cellulose thinner we're going to get this back to a nice smooth plastic so i'm not going to film all of this because i'm going oh, to go outside as well because this vapor on this stuff is strong so i'm just going to go ahead and take all this paint off and come back in a second so bear with me okay guys so here is the first painted door card handle. I'm just going to switch into manual focus because this thing does not like focusing. There we go. So you can see there we've got a really nice finish on this. Just making sure you can see it. You know we're not too dissimilar to how this would have looked when when it was originally painted um, it's a really it's come out really nice not because I'm some sort of skilled um, painter I'm not but if you take your time prepping it properly getting it really flat getting it really smooth then the plastic primer and then this it just seems to go on nice the texture levels that are in here that you can see just about right you want a bit of texture there but you don't want it all kind of knobbly and horrible so that's come out nice so that's where we are okay guys so I've just laid the uh, clear coat down on these parts this hasn't dried yet so I'm just gonna be careful but um, it's come out really good so there's a bit of texture in there that will level off a little bit as it dries could always um, polish these up I'm just not sure if it's going to be worth the effort you know so it's going to look good when it's in the car 
and this is dry. I mean, compared to what it was before, this is gonna look lovely. Um, so I'm just gonna let these dry for a day now, uh, maybe a bit even longer, and then um, leave that there. And try and stay out of here so I don't kick up too much dust and all that sort of stuff, because it will stick in the clear coat. So I just wanna leave these, there's two of them there. Um, then when they're dry, they'll clip back onto the, the lower part of the armrest. And then um, put them back in the car. So yeah, we're nearly finished on the inside now, so I might as well just show you some of the bits. Let's just take this off. So the light will be a little bit poor, so bear with me. So you can see these seat bolsters now looking pretty damn good. It's just looking a bit tidier. Um, so all the leather now is nice. The steering wheel now, this, this is dried. This steering wheel really is looking fantastic. Really important, I think, to have a good tidy steering wheel. And the gear stick's looking better. It was so, it was a bit far gone the gear stick, but it's come out okay now. Not perfect, but but okay, you know. Um, so that piece in the centre is what we're waiting on, and then obviously the um, we're waiting on these two bits to dry, and then we'll get the door cards back in there, and then we have an interior which is going to be really nice. Um, I mean, most of the interiors I've seen on these M3s, I mean, the owners will describe them as mint, they, they're never even close to it. And most of the time they're really tatty. This is probably, um, you know, this is going to be a really good, good interior without too many things wrong with it. That centre console was worth doing as well, I think. You know, it just, you can't really, go really looking you can tell but you know it, I'm so glad actually we did that so yeah it's it's all been um, it's all been pretty good in there uh, got the mats ready to go back in I bought some, bought some of these OEM clips for the mats there's nothing worse than having like two or three clips missing on your mats so that's something always try and sort out Okay. Okay guys, welcome back to the Forensics Detailing channel. So I finished now refinishing these armrests and just reassembled them. And uh, now the, the uh, clear coat's had a chance to dry. That clear coat will just provide a little bit more protection for the paint when you're grabbing these door handles all the time. Uh, I'm really pleased. Usually something, usually something when you're doing this sort of stuff, something goes wrong. You know, <laughs> you put it back together and you end up scratching it or something. But everything went really well, and um, the finish is good, and um, it was definitely worth worth doing this. You know, it's really it's going to be important. It's something you see, and it's something now, which is you know how closer to how the car was when it was um when it was uh, first new newer so to summarize if you're going to do this on your door cards on your door handle sorry um take the door cards off the car unscrew these pop them off wrench these things out and they don't come out easily because they're pushed in and there's they sit in these little there's pegs in these feet and they sit in little the metal teeth clamp onto the pegs. So you've got to get one of those plastic finishing tools underneath it and just prise it up from this end. Don't try and start with this end because there's a there's a little catch there so it levers up that way. So you prise it up, then pop it off and then inside it there's loads of clips and you press all the clips so it separates into two bits. Then when you've got this one bit with the failed paint on it, use cellulose thinner on that paint. Cellulose thinner and an old microfiber don't sand it. That's the only thing I've learned. Um, and that's the most important thing. Then once you've got all the paint off there, it needs to be flat. It needs to be really flat. Um, go over it with a tack cloth to get any little bits, dust or whatever off there, get a smooth finish. 
and then just one final coat of panel wipe or some sort of degreaser and then wipe all that off let that vape away then spray it with a plastic primer two coats of primer I did um, no rubbing down on the primer just put the primer down then put the coat on top just when you're doing rattle cans just stay well away from it I did it outside you're not supposed to and you can see why but didn't have any wind so I, you, you can get the wind is the main problem but whenever you're using the rattle cans just stay away from it don't sort of go slow and close and blast it or you get loads of paint build up you know and you get overruns and bogeys and all that so stay just well away just build up the layers stop wait fi wait 15 minutes come back build up the layers stop 15 minutes build up the layers until you've got a really good layer thin layer of paint over there but covered everywhere then come back leave that paint for for five or six hours maybe even longer wait call it a day at that point then come back the next day put the cl clear coat on and i did about two to three layers of clear coat with about 10 to 15 minutes between every coat and then left the clear coat again for another day before it's hard enough to be able to um refit everything so i could i could um flatten this clear coat down it's got lots of texture in it but i don't want to actually the clear coat's not too thick so it just looks right it doesn't it looks good you know it looks it looks like just how i wanted to do it and it and i'm really pleased with the results and it can like i say it can go bloody horribly wrong and you end up wasting your time but this one's come out good and this one this one's come out nice as well it's the one with the the sanding on it so it's got a few more sanding marks but you can't you can only tell when when i've got it out and i'm looking through it under the light now when it's in the car it's just going to look like a new painted piece so all is good so the next thing to do now is fit those back on get those door cards back on the car which would be important be a bit of a pain in the ass as well but that'd be good and then all we've got to do is fit the center console and the inside's done so that's pretty cool people like your clients and others to wait an, an, an unacceptable amount of time I would argue I think it needs to be refocused on core and key areas mm. and, and streamlined I, I think I think it has been broadened out uh, to an unacceptable level which is, is going to result in this massive uh, lengthy duration that we're going to see so I think the, the new chair will have the task of, of refocusing it and, and, and trying to streamline it Let's hope they get cracking, whatever. Thank you for your time. That's David McClenahan, who's a partner and solicitor advocate, specialises in child abuse compensation claims. You'll find them at the firm Bolt, Burden and Kemp. I'm still... This, I mean, obviously, I think it's... Not. So all we have left to do is quite simple, fit the interior center console panel that contains the two hatches, one for the, uh, the ashtray unit and one which is just a kind of storage hatch. So they should be quite simple and straightforward, just a couple of wires to connect, pop in a few screws and then we are done. And uh, I'll be really pleased to get this finished so we can move on to the exterior. Once upon a time, I could do no wrong, and you right. Lasted a while, but in the end, started to fade. And I used to pull my sorry. You said words don't mean a thing. 
to our dear bless a man. Now's the time to show me. Like I said, out on the wheel, you drifted away, drifted away like a star. Okay, guys, as always, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, it's been a real pleasure getting the inside of this car. I think whenever you're doing a detail and you've got work to do, it's always good to get the interior stuff done first. So the interior of the car is now restored and in a really nice condition. Um, it hasn't been too difficult to do. The hardest thing is just stripping everything out and, um, like I said before, prepping those panels of paint is a bit of a, a, bit of a ball ache. <laughs> Um, but it's all been sprayed up, it's all gone well and now we have an interior which looks closer not not exactly new, you know, it's still a 15 year old car um, but in very nice fresh condition not too dissimilar to how the car would have been um, after a couple of, being a couple of years old so I'm really pleased with that um, the next video will be doing a full three stage polish of this exterior which is going to be a lot of work and we're going to film f film as much as that as we can because the paintwork is really spiraled up but it's it this really the paint on this car is a real example a good example to demo actually because it looks so bad when it's in the sun like the swirls I'll show you the pictures of it in the next video when you get the sunlight on it it's covered in swirls all over that bonnet but it's the stuff that really does you know paint correction gets rid of it's not heavy scratches it's just light scratches from being washed poorly for years and years and years uh, and I think it's going to make quite a good demo video to show you um, what, what you can do unfortunately um, it's not going to be an easy job to get all this the paintwork right it's not going to be we're not going to be able to use the one stage s20 we're going to we're going to have to use when we do the compound in the damage correction phase I'm guessing we're going to have to do two heavy sets. Um, two heavy sets. We might even use the rotary actually. 
because it might just make things a little bit easier. Um, we'll see, we'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, that's next on the channel. So thank you very much for tuning in as always. Lots more videos to come and um, I will see you soon. Thank you.